Welcome to the Market Recap, presented by Tackle Trading. Get in the game. Good afternoon, Tackle Traders, and hello, YouTube. This is Frank coming to you with the Market Recap. It is Monday. It is the 17th of June. We kind of started this week off like we ended last week, doing a whole lot of nothing, uh, basically uh, back and forth all day long, broadly speaking, really going nowhere as it really seems like we're just waiting for the Wednesday Fed meeting. Uh, we only have one more day to see if that's true, right? But today at least, we're still in that very narrow range from a broad perspective. And good afternoon, Ed. Hey there, Tanner. Hi, Micah. Welcome out, everybody. I hope you guys all had a great weekend. Great day today in the market as well. Uh, it, was a, it was a little dull. We did see some selling over in the material sector, finally. Uh, it's been a while since we've said that. Uh, maybe presenting maybe a little bit of a pullback opportunity for us a little later in the week. Really nice upward movement on the REITs and just a lot of Blah, pretty much uh, everywhere else. And good afternoon, Pascal. And hello, Linda. Great to see you as always. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, here we are once again, opening up back and forth, back and forth on the S&P, really just never going anywhere. We are in a weird little spot uh, right now, just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Just another day, another little doji uh, on the S&P 500. So, of course, with that being said, not really a lot to say here. Uh, we're going to continue to be using this resistance that we've established here last week, just north of 2,900 for, for the resistance zone support. You know, we can every day that we're above this little do or this little candle from last week, every day we're above it, you know, I think it means just a little bit more in regards to some support. So nothing really to see. Hey, 14, oh, good to see you, buddy. Just continuing to be in this range. And it really feels like at least it's kind of let's wait for this Fed announcement and then we'll decide what we want to do next. Uh, that's what it feels like the market wants right now. I uh, felt like that on Friday. It really feels like it now. Uh, and uh, good afternoon, Patricia. Great to see you. I hope you're well. Uh, over in the Dow, very similar chart as is often the case. Got an idea of where our support zone is going to be right around that 26 mark, somewhere on this old resistance, little swing that we set up last week, just above 26.2 on the resistance side of things. So really like last week, I think until we get some clarity one way or the other. That is kind of the first signal, if you will, uh, for direction that I will be looking for. I think a break to the upside, probably short term, a stronger technical signal, but a break to the downside. I do think there's something we can do with that one as well. Over in the NASDAQ, not, not quite as dull, but still stuck in the range, right? <laughs> so uh, semiconductors a little mixed today, but kind of slowed down in some of the selling overall that we've seen in that space. Really, at this point in time, broken record here, but we know where our support zone is. This has actually turned into a little intraday floor that we can kind of look towards. And it really kind of jumps out a little bit when you look at it on an hourly time frame. I think, where as long as this floor is holding, hard to be too terribly bearish if this floor gives out, could present some selling within the NASDAQ. On the other side of things, if we can take out that 76, break through that resistance, should be a decent little bullish signal as well. And the rut, uh, kind of now working into, I finally was able to capture that 15, 20, 25 range last week. Now we're working into that falling 200 day moving average, still are making those lower highs and lower lows. But as we've kind of talked about a lot, for me at least, uh, I'm continuing a overall neutral stance on the Russell. Uh, maybe, a, I don't even know if I'd want to say maybe a, a pinch to the, to the bearish side. Really, I think that this thing is kind of smack dab in neutrality uh, as we speak right now. We'll see where this weekly candle, if we spend a little bit more time in this really range, we're gonna run into things. We've got, we saw that 200, we've seen the 50 on the daily chart. Now we're kind of fighting with these weekly averages uh, to boot. So at this point, I think we continue to look at the rut as, uh, as overall sideways. Maybe we're a little skewed one way or the other based off of what we're seeing. But I think for the most part, you look at the rut and we're kind of still overall within a range. And hello there, Whitney. Hi, Adib. Good to see you guys as always. 
uh, another dull day, right? Uh, only dull for some of the directional trades, the theta trades. We don't mind days like this, right? <laughs> so where we did see some selling here today was the material sector. You know, after really hanging in there all week at resistance last week, had some downward movement early. And this is one of those areas that we really just sold. Now, it, to me, it makes sense. You know, that we've we're at resistance. You know, we we've looked at these charts. Although we're going to take a pick, peek at a few of them uh, anyway. Uh, we were kind of in need of something, right? We had a little consolidation, but we we're just seeing more and more drift pretty much all last week within this sector. So a little bit of selling, I think. You know, big picture is healthy. A nice little retracement in this space could present some nice opportunities uh, going into the later part of the week. And good afternoon, Jeanette. Uh, Jeanette good to see you. Uh, I think uh, one of the more interesting charts, and we've got a little bit of work to do in this sector before we're on this chart before we're there. We have international uh, flavors here breaking out of some resistance uh, a couple of weeks ago, kind of working back into that old range, kind of no turnaround candle. I don't think this is something that I would feel comfortable buying into the way it looks, but if we can see a little bit of slowdown and some upward momentum, could be an interesting pullback candidate once the the material sector as a whole starts pushing up. So there are going to be certain things that have pulled back a little bit more than others. But Echo Labs that really broke down here today. So, you know, we've kind of watched this one, but we need to see it slow down. I don't know what the news was. I couldn't find it. Maybe it was just the way the day was, but we really had a good spike in volume as we were selling. Most of this sector was in kind of just normal selling, I guess, if you will. But we really saw quite the spike here. Not sure if it would, you know, I couldn't see any news uh, by uh, that really prompted me to think, oh, that's what it is. Uh, so not a great look, but a lot of them look a little bit more like Lynn, where it was just kind of a little bit of a drift to the downside. So it continues to be an area I think we're going to like. You actually saw Newmont break, uh, I think, well, you could argue at least, break out here today. Uh, so there's still strength here. I think a pullback is, is what I'm going to be looking for. Uh, I kind of would, wouldn't mind being you know ready if it's a shallow pullback or a deeper pullback. I would be okay with either. I'm still going to be very cautious overall from a bearish perspective. I believe we can trade bearish into this sector during the pullback phase, but I'm not going to go out of my way to look for those type of opportunities. I still feel like this is a very strong sector overall, when basically this is the most conversation we've had about it for a while. We're above all of our moving averages. It's really this resistance zone for me. If we can push through that, that should be a very interesting uh, tradable signal. Pullback, we can watch the nine, but I think at this point, we're going to kind of be watching the price action to see what establishes as a, a support zone for us. Over in energy, kind of the opposite type of a day. We uh, move, gap down early and then we really fought back all day long as traders were willing to put money back into this sector. Maybe we want to take a run at this swing high, this resistance level, this pivot, whatever you would like to call it, that we established. Very similar to where we've been the last a little while. As long as we are below that resistance level, that's going to put us right about 69 or 62.20. At the very least, that's the first place where I will say, okay, maybe I should be a little bit uh, more bullish or open to more bullish ideas within this sector. As long as this resistance holds, the back and forth can do whatever it wants to do. I'm going to stay the course uh, and looking at this as a bearish retracement. If that breaks, I have to really reevaluate that, right? It doesn't mean I'm going to you know, quickly turn into a bull, but if that's the way it plays, we'll have put in a higher low, put in a higher high. We'll have some work to do, right? Lots of it. We've got old floors, 50-day moving averages, major zones of, uh, of price history, the 200-day moving average. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. We'll talk about it if we break to the upside there. But really, I'm continuing to look at this uh, overall from a bearish perspective. Most of the companies within this sector look something like this right now. And certainly that is a, an exaggeration, right? There's always somebody who's doing great. But you look at an Exxon uh, Mobil, very, very similar. Look at a Chevron. Maybe they're, they're showing some relative strength. You look at a Conoco. They're in that same type of spot with some support to boot. Same with EOG, some support uh, kind of in that 
same general area. So not turned around at this point in time, putting up a little better of a fight than quite honestly, I would have expected it to, uh, but that is just today. Uh, so uh, KMI, we've kind of talked about the relative strength of the midstream uh, energy companies and certainly uh, the KMIs of the world have held up quite a bit better. But for the most part, I look at those charts and I still feel like it's a real tough sell to want to get too bullish uh, at the very least until we break some sort of resistance zones. Over in financials, we did see some selling over here. We actually started to see some of our insurance companies do a little bit of a pullback like, uh, like Chubb pulling back a little bit again. I think we might be going a little crazy, you know, but this is the first real selling we had, not particularly uh, friendly bullish candle today, right? Uh, you know, fairly bearish looking candle. Trend obviously still very much intact. So we saw, you know, we see some of the insurance type of companies that have really been a, a big component of, of dragging this thing up as of late. Uh, some of the exchanges too, still kind of in that pullback type of phase. Again, these areas, these trends to me, they still very much uh, look intact, but not really making me think tomorrow is the day that the financial sector is ready to rock and roll. On the other side of things, and let's pop into this list over here and go into the financial sector. There are some really interesting looking things on some of the on some of the banks. Uh, you know, bearish retracement types. Bank of New York Mellon here. Uh, that's you know again maybe that's not your cup of tea, but eh, looking fairly on the bearish side of things. You know, Citigroup, a little bit of a bearish retracement. A lot of the uh, the regional banks, uh, People's Bank here, bearish retracement. Uh, so there are certainly some bearish retracements out there uh, in uh, in this space as well. So it really looks fairly mixed. I think we're probably going to need a little bit of time for new bullish broadly speaking, opportunities uh, to let these pullbacks kind of play out a little bit. It looks, as we look at the ETF and look at the components, it feels like the bears, at least in the very short term, and that's kind of how I'm looking at it, have a little bit more control than they've had in a little while. When we look at the candlestick here today, big red candle pushing through our moving averages. Again, I'm go not going to change my overall view on financial, but if I'm looking at it from a buying perspective, I probably need to see some sort of turnaround candles develop. That could happen as early as tomorrow, but I think that's what I'm going to need to see before I get too terribly excited. If we continue to watch these exchanges and some of these insurance companies have really been the leaders in this space and the banks, well, they're somewhere between in the middle and a little bit on the bearish side to my eyes, at least, maybe we should expect a wee bit more selling in the very short term. But uh, boy, I'll certainly be interested in some nice clean pullbacks on some of those great upward trending industries within the financial sector if, uh, if we get some nice setups. Over in the industrial sector, just kind of dancing around, much like the broad market, very, very similar, kind of stuck between support and some resistance at uh, about 76.50. So right now, much like the rest of the market, just kind of holding up. Really, the you know we, we continue, we talk a lot about it, but you continue to see relative strength in defense, the Lockheeds, the Harris's, the, the level threes, uh, even the NOCs uh, of the world. But we still have to be a little bit on the careful side of things uh, within this space, just because whenever you're kind of in the news and the in the crosshairs of of the president, maybe it's a good idea. And of course, that's where we are with that UTX and that Raytheon uh, deal at this point. So these ones are the ones that are kind of throwing a little bit of cold water on a pretty strong overall industry. And hey, Jambo, great to see you, my friend. Let's take a quick view, uh, rewind back into the financial sector, into travelers, still knocking on the door of a break. Gotta love where it is, I think. Gotta love the relative strength, Jimbo, that we saw here today. We're still knocking on the door. I don't, you know, I, you know, maybe we were, you know, moved in last week would be a different story, but as of today, I don't think we've broken out at this point in time. We're really trying to, right? We're really pushing that resistance level. So I think at this point in time, Jimbo, that that close above this little week long resistance zone that we've put in would be a, a very nice signal uh, from a bullish point of view. Uh, from a bearish point of view, you, we got a long ways to go. Uh, it's going to have to do a lot for me to turn uh, on uh, on this. Can't happen, 
right? But right now, higher highs, higher lows, uh, bet on travelers, bet on trend, right? Maybe not the stock, maybe you don't know a whole lot or don't really like the company, but the trend suggests that uh, it's something worth fighting for. So just kind of knocking on that door here, Jimbo, maybe we need some strength to move back into the industry, if not the sector as a whole, to get us through that resistance. But I would certainly call that a breakout. It's a mini breakout, but I would absolutely call it that if and when we take out that little top. I really like the way that chart looks personally. So not a whole lot of new and exciting things to talk about with the, the industrials. You do have Boeing kind of turning, you know, maybe trying uh, to, to turn on uh, a little bit. Uh, still something I'm shying away from, you know, anything new is, uh, you know, related. And maybe it's just being a little too cautious and that's okay. But started to, you know, we did put in a little bit of a higher low today. Now we've not taken out that higher high. I think any conversation from a bullish perspective can't start until we get back above this breakdown, above these moving averages, all lining up about the same spot. But I did find it interesting, had a little bit of a bounce, a little bit of a bounce back after a pretty steep drop on the break and a pretty quick entry for the bears on the retest of the break. Now we're still lining up for another potential break, right? We haven't done anything yet, but we are kind of holding our own a little bit. And of course, them being positive or at least not negative, uh, them going with the, the the direction that we're trading into the industrial sector never really hurts. It is Boeing uh, after all. So, and hey there, Ilka, good to see you, my friend. I did. I did. It was a nice weekend. It's rain. And I thought for a little while there might not be a market recap today because it was flickering. Uh, it was thundering. It was lightning. It was blowing like crazy. But then uh, it got to be about uh, 2.30, which is where, uh, you know, in Utah, where we do the recap and all of a sudden smooth sailing. And I didn't even have, have to worry about saying, well, if I disappear, it was probably that. <laughs> so, but uh, great to see you, my friend, uh, as always. So, and I, I hope you had a great weekend as well. Over on the tech side of things, again, this is kind of the same story that we've talked a lot about as of late, although we are developing something, you know, we're still days, if not uh, further away uh, from this little breakout. This is a fun breakout pattern. I think if we can take another run at that resistance uh, here on Cisco, we're still a ways away from that. Uh, and you could maybe argue that this is a pullback. I, I wouldn't go that far, but I think you could argue some upward movement. Not a lot of reason why we won't take another run at that resistance. Uh, but beyond that, it was really kind of just more of the same. So uh, great to hear my friend, just kind of hanging in there. You did have AMD, which you know was uh, potentially a pullback. You know, we talked about it last week. We talked about it in our scouting report meeting. We uh, had it on our reports, uh, not able to hold that break. Uh, and so, you know, for I think for, for me, and I probably imagine, you know, I know the uh, other coaches, well, I think for probably a lot of the other coaches with the failure at this $30 breakout point, I think that's going to, you know, kind of take a step back. It just, you know, again, it always comes back down to our own personal style and, 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 and signals, but that failure there along with the weakness, we can change our mind, but I think at this point, I'm going to need to see some upward movement uh, before I would want to be thinking too much about it. This is certainly the outlier, right, uh, within the semiconductors uh, as, as far as overall strength. On the other end, you've got Micron just sitting on a little bit of a floor uh, for a potential, a potential, uh, you know, breakdown, right? Just dancing right on that floor for now two days in a row. It really comes down to the semiconductors. Most of the other areas, you know, Microsoft still showing some strength, you know, uh, you know, Cisco, yeah, a little more in the neutral side of things, but I would argue over a little bit more strength. The visas and the MasterCards kind of doing the little doji dance, you know, breakout could very much be in play, but we're still a few days away from that. So I'm still open. I'm a little cautious on tech, as you guys know mostly because of the semiconductors. It's not so much because of Visa's chart. It's just that I know that they can drag it around. It's hard to fight. You know, it's, it, we always just want to go with the flow, right? And the more the flow we have on our side, the easier our life is. At least that's the way I tend to think about things. So I'm still open, but a little bit cautious and still very much shying away from the semiconductors from a bullish point of view. Uh, a uh, AMD was about the only one that you could have talked me into. And with the failure of the breakout point, the $30 mark, maybe something develops in the next several days, but that's probably what it takes to even have that conversation. 
we did see some selling early uh, within the uh, staple sector, but we really fought back you know, off of the lows of the day. And it, again, it just comes down to the strength that we've seen. We've talked a lot about it. There's really no reason to beat it to death. Just continues to show a lot of strength. Could it use a pullback? Sure. I think you could argue that. Are we, you know, kind of hanging around that old 59 resistance, that last level on that weekly time frame? Yeah, we're still doing that little dance, but really it just continues to show a tremendous amount of strength overall. If we take a quick peek here, we might still need a little bit of time, but you're seeing uh, the, the Pepsi's, a little bit of a pullback developing on Pepsi. Uh, you know, I thought that was a, an interesting one. Walmart still just continuing to, uh, to run on its break, uh, although it seems to be slowing down a little bit. You have Costco here at an all time high, needs a pullback. So again, you look at these things and, and they may not want you, they may not be your entry. You know, I look at a lot of these things. I say, I need a pullback or consolidation. Uh, I don't want to you know, jump in this late into this swing. It's not anything other than a comfort thing, right? It's not I'm betting that they're going to end <laughs> by any means. Uh, so an area that I think we can continue to favor uh, from a bullish perspective, there's always going to be things out there, but we are kind of a, you know, a little bit on the extended side, a little pullback, at least in the short term, wouldn't be a bad thing. We'll see where we get on Wednesday with that Fed meeting. I would imagine that will either actually prompt some movement or it won't prompt some movement. And then we'll say, well, it's not going to prompt some movement. Let's make up our mind as a collective unit in the market. So I think maybe not literally the second that announcement comes out, but I think post that announcement in the, you know, later that afternoon or in the days to come, one way or another, I think we'll probably see some movement pushing us out one way or the other. And that could prompt some pullback opportunities in some of these strong upward trending uh, areas. Over in utilities, we did see some profit taking today at this resistance zone. Not a terribly huge surprise if we are going to see, you know, profit taking at resistance always is the most logical place to see it, right? Uh, so really not a whole lot uh, here within the utility sector. Breaking above this resistance zone certainly be a continuation signal, a little bit of a consolidation, or even a mellow pullback could be okay as well. As long as we're holding 59, I'll stay on the bullish side of things. Pushing through that resistance, I think, would be a decent signal uh, for continuation. Again, I'm not going to be the guy that even thinks about bidding against utilities at this point in time. They remain very, very strong. Over in the healthcare sector, a little bit of upward movement. Now, really nothing happened. You look at this chart, we're very, very sideways, right? But, you know, we are seeing some interesting things potentially developing. I know, Ilka, you've got MDT in your watch list uh, from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and uh, now we've con consolidated here for over a week. Hmm, a break beyond that could certainly be interesting. If that's uh, not your style, if that's not your cup of tea, uh, you know, we've got a pullback on Johnson & Johnson. Now, I'm showing a way because of the news associated with them, but technically I think it can make some sense. We've got UNH potentially knocking on the door of a breakout uh, opportunity if you aren't concerned about that 200 period uh, moving average. You've got Merck dancing right at that old time high for a week now. That would be a potential break. They're not all that way. You've got your Abbey V's of the world who are kind of right in moving average soup, trying to hold some support, but it's been a long time since we broke any resistance. But you look at some of the big names within this space, hard not to you know feel optimistic if you are a bull. Amgen pushing through its 50 day moving average today. Uh, ABT finally a little bit of selling after breaking out. Lily fighting back, still has some work to do, uh, still below the 200, still below all the moving averages, but at least buyers were willing to step into it here today. Of course, CVS doing a whole lot of nothing. Uh, I was I thought Boston uh, BSX here was a very interesting uh, watch list candidate going into the next couple of days, kind of sitting on an old resistant zone on top of that nine EMA with a little bit of, you know, holding a three day floor now. Haven't seen that upward movement, haven't seen that, you know, confirmation, at least I would argue that we haven't, but I could see a scenario with some upward movement. We 
could see it as soon as tomorrow. So there's pullbacks uh, out there. There's certainly breakouts. Yeah, I like that breakout uh, there, Ilka. There's lots of them developing within this space for sure. On the other side of things, still seeing some weakness in Lilly. You're still seeing some weakness in, in AGN. They really weren't able to fight back here today. A little bit of a doji after the selling last week, uh, but not a very inspiring chart. So there's gonna be opportunities on both sides, but I think as long as we are holding this little floor that we have put together now over the last uh, week or so. And it's kind of makes sense where it is. We've seen that history of that $91 range before, right? Uh, as long as we're holding up here, I'm gonna have a bullish skew within the healthcare sector. Quite honestly, as long as the market doesn't, you know, really sell dramatically for one reason or another, I expect in somewhere in the not too distant future, I know I said it before, but I expect that, you know, we're going to be knocking on the door of 93 at some point in the not too distant future uh, on this ETF. You just look at those charts and now they're going to have to fight through and some of those are pretty tough fights, right? That's kind of why we're seeing it do this little dance over the last week of trading. It's kind of reflecting this battle that we're seeing at resistance. So it's not an easy fight to win, but if we can win that fight, there's room for you know upward movement in my mind. Uh, I will be very interested if we can break this little ceiling that we put together over the last week or so, an area I really like personally, from a technical point of view, especially. Uh, over in discretionary, just a boring day in discretionary, not a whole lot to see here. Very much like we've talked, uh, you know, for, for a while now, it's one of those areas that in my mind, you are, you know, looking at it from both sides, open to bullish trades, open to bearish trades, not expecting the overall uh, sector to drag you, you know, too much along with it one way or another. We are overall seeing more strength in the sector. There's no doubt about that, right? Continue to drift to the upside, but that doesn't mean there's not going to be some questionable uh, stocks uh, that uh, are, are charts uh, from a bullish point of view out there as well. Uh, you actually saw a little bit of selling finally on Starbucks here today. It's a pretty darn bearish engulfing candle. So not something that you, yeah, I'm not going to buy into that for better or worse and never will be my style, but a pullback in the days ahead of us, you know, could very much be interesting uh, within that uh, with over on Starbucks. I mean, they've been tremendously strong. They did hit a new 52 week high today although that didn't end with a very bullish candle, as you can see there at Target, pullback, sitting on that nine with a little bit of a hammer candlestick too. So there are certainly some interesting candidates out there. Amazon's kind of reclaimed at least a little bit of strength. One more level of resistance might be a, might be a little bit of a, a bullish surge uh, on that chart. Even uh, our booking here kind of sat trying to sit and hold its nine uh, EMA. So we are overall seeing a little more strength than weakness, but within this space there are certainly things that you have to be a little concerned. You did see Nike, who's been fighting at that 50 day moving average for over a week, really sell uh, relative to how it's been behaving at least. You know, that's not a particularly inspiring candle either. So it's not all rosy over in this sector. I think we continue to look at it on a case by case basis, skewed to the bullish side, because I think the overall ETF chart suggests that that's how we should look at it. But very, very open to the bearish side still within the discretionary sector. Real estate, big winner here today. Uh, again, it, we've talked a lot about it, uh, so probably doesn't come at any surprise to any of us. Just strength, strength, and strength. This is an all-time high, yet another all-time high on the ETF. It continues to be very, very strong. Uh, was it VTR? Uh, was it VTR? Yeah, VTR broke out uh, here today. I wish I were involved. Uh, when you can't remember the ticker symbol, you know that uh, you uh, weren't there, all right? <laughs> so, but a ton of movement, uh, you know, uh, over in, in the REITs. Uh, it just continues to be tremendously strong. Uh, and I don't think you guys need me or anybody else to tell you that. Just another good solid day for AMT. Even the stocks that aren't looking all that great technically, you know, starting to show some some signs of technical life. I mean, you could make a case that we've held support. You definitely can make a case that we broke resistance today. And yes, it's you know early in the process, but this is the first time whoops, that we've been able to do that for quite some time. So even on some of the, you know, the stocks that, or the REITs that, yeah, that's not a great looking chart, 
showing at least some signs of, of life via breaking resistance. Now, so many of them look like Prologist or uh, AMT or uh, PSA, little breakout candidate there may be uh, uh, for us. EQIX, so just continues to show a tremendous amount of strength. Uh, if you have any bearish argument on REITs right now, I don't understand where you're coming from. Uh, that is for sure. Uh, on the support side of things, I mean, at this point, you're probably looking at this 37 resistance, uh, this little mini break and fake before we actually had the confirmed break. The rising 20 will kind of line up at that point too. I'm not, not sure exactly what type of a pullback uh, we would get on it, uh, but at this point, I think you look for reasons to buy REITs. You certainly aren't looking for technical reasons to sell them in my mind. And then over in communication services, the big chart of the day is Facebook. Uh, after kind of bouncing uh, into that 50, into that old floor here last week, gapping back above it here today into a resistance zone just like that. Uh, we are fighting, fighting back uh, in Facebook. Uh, if you had a bearish skew on it, I think this is a signal that you have to be very mindful of. Uh, I don't think that, uh, I think this retracement is gone. Personally, I think you have to say, well, hey, it was a retracement. It's not anymore. We are a little bit of resistance, but that's quite a bit of, of movement. I'm still shying away from, from Facebook in the sector as a whole, but that was a very strong move. And it really shows when you look at the communication services chart. This was actually a really, you know, this is a good looking chart, you know, from a potential turnaround. I don't like this ETF because of how tight it is, as you guys know, to Facebook and Google. But that's certainly have to call that a bullish signal in my mind. We've, you know, we had the, you know, a retracement or bearish opportunity. We took out that swing. Is it enough to make you completely say I'm super bullish on this? I guess that's up to you. It's not enough for me to feel that way. But I absolutely think you have to call this a little bit of a bullish signal in on this ETF. Now, again, as always, this is a case by case area. Facebook showing some strength. And I think you just have to kind of tip your hat to them for that. Google, although I guess it helps if you put the right ticker symbol in there, still kind of sitting in that bearish retracement mode. Uh, so I don't think these guys are out of the woods yet. They're an interesting place sitting between the falling 20 and that rising nine. One little little uh, short-term pincher going on right here. Uh, so we've got that might be an interesting one to follow. I'll be, of course, skewed to the downside because, well, we are clearly still making the lower highs and lower lows. But a little bit of a fight back here today certainly was one of our stronger areas, regardless of what yours or my or anybody else's overall opinions of the of the uh, sector uh, move today was. So on the resistance side of things, probably gonna be looking at 50 as the next real level of resistance, especially if we can kind of clear today's intraday, cleanly getting back above that 50 day moving average. On the support side of things, I think you absolutely can say as long as we're above this swing low right here at around 47 and a quarter, you have to have some sort of a bullish skew uh, in the short term on the sector. So, you know, it was kind of a dull day overall in the market, but there's always something, right? There's always some things uh, moving and shaking. And there's, uh, it, uh, it just it doesn't feel like it when you look at the S&P's chart, right? Seems like how the heck did anything move here today? Seems like it's gonna be a Fed, uh, Fed week. Uh, <laughs> so over on the VIX, boring day in the market, boring day on the VIX, right? Just continuing to just kind of Wait and see, wait and see. Seems like that's what the entire uh, market's waiting to do. Little more upward movement in the dollar, working into a new challenge, right? This is was a, a breakout point that a lot of people were looking at back in April. We saw some serious, you know, price movement when we took out that resistance zone. I think if you are bullish, you do view this as a challenge and do respect it just because of our history here. If we can push through that, realistically speaking, I don't see why we aren't going to be pushing towards those older highs in that $98, maybe a little bit higher uh, range. So continues to have a really nice bounce off of that 200 day moving average uh, for, uh, for the third time in a row, right? Uh, that has been a place where buyers have been more than willing to step in regardless of how ugly it might have looked on the way down to that 200 day moving average. So nice movement there. On the support side of things, probably the nine EMA as our first level, that 97 area, could like could come into play as well. 
over in gold, a little bit of a tail type of a day. So coming into its uh, intraday chart, you can kind of see that we kind of had that run up early and then just kind of sideways uh, off of the lows of the day, which ultimately ends us having a little bit of a red candle. Uh, but we did see more bulls, some bullish activity uh, within the price action of the candlestick here today. I don't think you can deny that coming off of those lows. Now, really at this point, new trades for me on gold are the close of 1350 uh, for the signal. That is certainly a, a signal that I think is very intriguing from a bullish point of view. Uh, until then, I just assume 1350 is gonna continue to win. Uh, so until it doesn't any longer. Uh, on the support side of things, hanging out, at this 1320, 1325 range, we've seen some good upward movement off of that. That I think we can confidently say is an important level of support for gold right now. I don't expect to work down into it, but assuming we do, that's a very interesting price uh, for price action, whether it's a bounce or a break, uh, potentially. Uh, we're still fighting for a breakout though, right? We're still seeing buyers willing to, to come in basically whenever they feel like they have a a reason to. Uh, and uh, that kind of shows how interested uh, the bulls are right now in gold. But we keep losing at 1350. So we can't be the only ones watching that price range. Over in silver, boring, boring, boring. Uh, and unlike gold, who's fighting for a breakout, you might think they're going to win, you might think they're going to lose, but it's probably an interesting battle for you to watch. Over on silver, just kind of back and forth day. Uh, going nowhere. And yeah, we'll peek at them before I let you out of here, Jimbo. Uh, just hanging in there again. Above 15 is kind of the first place uh, we can be talking about it. But I've said many, as I've said many times, I can't really get the argument for silver, technically speaking, over gold right now. Gold has, you know, you may not like it, but I think it's so much more easy to identify uh, on the chart than silver, which is just a mess, right? Uh, moving averages, weird, you know, candlestick tops on the intraday on the shadows uh, $15 which is you know causes tremendous amounts of grief uh, so not a whole lot to see here at least in my mind on silver right now I think you have to break above 15 before you start looking for bullish entries I don't think that that would be a bullish signal but I think I would start to maybe be open to the idea uh, on the other end of it 1460 a break below that could be an interesting little short-term sell signal uh, as well uh, we're a ways away from that much like gold that several days away if ever away from happening but certainly something worth keeping an eye on as we move uh, ahead in the week over natural gas just hanging just hanging around at this you know old resistance zone again no real reason to beat this one to death as long as we're below that weekly breakdown it's bearish or nothing in my mind i think a really nice signal is going to be a break to the downside. So I think this is uh, one of those that if I'm not in a chart that looks like this, I'm not really looking to try to make my entry up in here. I'm looking to try to make my entry on the break of the, the very nicely developed floor that we've seen. And while we're kind of in between this area, yeah, I would 100%, if I had to trade natural gas today, it would be bearish and it would be a quick. Uh, thankfully, I don't have to do that. Uh, if I'm not uh, in it, I would much prefer to wait for the break of that support zone for that signal but any you know that's me anything up in here i mean this is you guys know the drill i mean this was a big breakdown on that weekly time frame so could you know any real reasons that fit your plan and your ex you know your style of trading i really wouldn't argue against uh, them if they were bearish bullish i think at the very 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 least until we're back above that you can't be thinking that there's any great technical reason for natty gas to turn around anytime soon so i really think it's an interesting uh, potential breakdown in the days to come with the floor that's built up over the last couple of weeks uh, off of that initial break and lastly over in crude its own weird, own little weird spot, right? Uh, much like natural gas, it's somewhere between resistance and support right now. I think the breakdown is a better signal than the break above resistance. But unlike, uh, you know, nat natural gas, that's not nearly the level of of resistance in my mind uh, on on crude oil. Again, it really kind of comes down to, uh, you know, how do we feel about the floors in here at about fifty fifty versus the round number mark at fifty dollars. Because I think either, you know, wherever you land on that, I think a break below either of those numbers 
is a, a bearish signal. Uh, on the other side of things, I do believe a break above this 50, and I'm going to call it 55, but it really puts us about 54, 75, a break above that resistance could be a turnaround signal, at least short term uh, within crude. I think both of those areas are pretty important right now for crude. As long as we're in the middle, as long as that nine continues to be on top of us, I'll be leaning more towards the bearish side of things. But until we've seen a break, I think you're either, you know, you either trade it into the retracement and well, you're either profit taking or just happy or moving your stop loss. Uh, if you're looking for new bearish entries in crude, I think we're too close unless we're, you know, intraday stuff, obviously. But I think we have to respect this support zone. We've seen two bounces off of it. It's lining up very nicely with that $50 mark. Uh, you know, however you're viewing that, it is lining up pretty nicely there. So I think until we see a break one way or the other, it's, uh, you know, kind of stay the course, still skewed to the bearish side of things. Uh, and good afternoon, Umbro. Great to see you. Uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, so that is where we find ourselves after, uh, again, an uneventful day, but there's always something moving here. Taking a quick, uh, quick uh, rapid fire here. If you guys have anything, you're always welcome to bring it up here. Uh, AEP, very much like the utility sector, right, Jimbo, where we had that pullback, we've worked into resistance, trend still very, very much intact. Uh, and so a break would be that, you know, that follow through signal trend still very much intact. Got to love you, a AEP technically pretty much the exact same read, I would argue, uh, as uh, the XLU uh, as a whole. On some of the uh, insurance companies right now, we're going to have to wait for some sort of a turnaround candle here, uh, Jimbo. So could have argued that, you know, we had a different looking candle today. We could have been calling it a pullback. I think we can still be calling it a pullback. But until we see that turnaround candle, I don't think you could say that it's tomorrow. Right. It might be tomorrow, but there's nothing in this chart would make that would make me believe that the chart you know, the trend overall is still very much intact. So I'm still going to be looking at anything that looks like this, whether it's ticker symbol is uh, MMC or whatever else for that matter, but not on a day like this. Pretty bearish candle, quite a bit of selling, was pretty much industry wide, most uh, to, to one extent or another, most of the insurance companies did see some selling here today. So this is just going to be a wait and see for me. It makes sense price wise, right? Last time we pulled into the 20, it was a good buy. Pulled back into the 20 here. It's a good buy. Anytime that nine's rising above that 20, I'm going to be interested. Just it's not today. I'm going to need to have something develop in the next you know handful of days for that. You know, hey, there's reason to believe that buyers are stepping back in because today, in a bubble, there's no reason to believe anybody believes in MMC today, right? Top to bottom, big giant red candle, not a great look here, but the trend's still very much intact. And anytime I see anything like this, I'm just waiting for that type of a turnaround. I hope that makes uh, some sense. Of course, ETR is gonna have the very same uh, overall evaluation of everything in the utility sector. It's running together as it oftentimes does. So again, very, very similar, really our swing lows, as long as we're holding these swings on the individual stocks and or the ETF, I think you're still looking at it from an overall bullish. Now we're just at resistance, right? This is kind of a battle. We're seeing it on the, the individual stocks. We're seeing it on the ETF. So it's a battle at resistance right now. The trend suggests believe in the trend to continue to win. Uh, but it is resistance, right? We call it resistance uh, for a reason. Uh, and uh, oh, WCG, nice, uh, nice uh, call on WCG there, uh, Jeanette. Very interesting chart. A uh, little bit of a breakout happened, kind of knocking on the door of, an, of you know, I think you could, depending on your uh, uh, rules and your definitions, I think you could easily argue that this broke out here today. Uh, I certainly would want to see some upward movement, some follow through tomorrow. That's one of my rules, Jeanette, is when I break resistance or support, I want to see follow through, uh, if you will. So if I you know, can't break today's high tomorrow, how much oomph is behind it, right? That's kind of you know my thought process, at least, as to why I use that rule. But upward movement, uh, I would absolutely say that that is a, a breakout. Personally, I think you know you could make a case that uh, it was a little fake out, pullback breakout here today. Uh, so I th think you have to like where this is. Again, over in the healthcare, if we can get healthcare kind of moving, if we can get some of these other areas breaking, uh, you know, or you know, winning these battles at resistance. 
I really like this chart. I have them in my watch list as well. Uh, Jeanette, just need a little bit more movement. If you look at the weekly chart, it really looks, it kind of paints a, a pretty a decent picture to me as well. We've created the higher lows, right? We've seen, you know, the UNHs and other, you know, healthcare plans throughout the, uh, the, the industry, you know, throughout the industry show some sorts of, of relative strengths. Heck, even CI has been putting up a fight. So showing some strength in the sector, I would argue in some of the, you know, industry components, little little bit of a break, a little bit of follow through, that could be a really interesting challenge. Uh, 300 or interesting setup, 300 probably a challenge area on a chart that looks like this uh, because we do have a little bit of a, of a history, right? Used as a little bit of a floor. And so that kind of be that first challenge. Beyond that, there's room to the upside and certainly uh, healthcare plans have a history of being able to move. So I think that's a very interesting watch list uh, candidate, uh, Jeanette. I too, uh, I'm keeping an eye on them, so. Um, I'm not sure, Ambrosi, when you got in with TD, you couldn't uh, use a good till uh, canceled, uh, just use a day order then. Uh, and then, uh, you know, it, uh, if, if that's the the case, just set up a day order. If it doesn't hit your entry, you can always go set up another one tomorrow. And honestly, most of the time that is for me how it needs to be. If that, if my entry doesn't get, so I'll just use, cause bullish or bearish, it's the same thing. If I have an entry in mind, I'm gonna, if I can break today's high by 10% of an ATR, I'm going to call this a confirmation of the break and I'm going to get in the trade, right? Same thing could be said if I just flip this chart upside down. Well, if I don't get into it tomorrow, it didn't hit that entry, uh, I will likely want to go in and reevaluate my entry anyway, may choose the same place, may choose to not have anything to do with it any longer, but good chance I'm going to need to adjust it in one way, shape or form. So one way that you could work with that is to use a day order. I don't think that's really a bad thing personally. And again, that's an opinion, you know, one, you know, it's not really right or wrong, but I do think from, uh, you know, a practical standpoint, I would just, you know, trying to set it up. I think you can use the day order. And then if you don't get into the trade, you can reevaluate. Do I still want in? Okay. Yes. Do I need to adjust my order in any way, shape or form? If yes, go ahead and do so. If no, we can set it back up. So without them letting you use the good tell cancel, that could at least be a way that you could work with that. Uh, Umbro, I hope that gives you some ideas there, my friend. Um, not the biggest problem in, in my opinion, again, because for me, usually if it doesn't get you in today, it means there might want to, you might want to reevaluate it. Uh, may not change it, but you'll kind of want to take a closer look at it and make sure you don't want to change it. So, uh, and yep. And then uh, lastly here on Apache, again, it's really going to be like the energy sector. I think it's showing a little bit of relative weakness to energy, but make no mistake about it. If energy, you know, flips around and breaks resistance and, and folks start buying into things, you know, Apache could certainly benefit from that. Uh, at this point in time, as long as we're below resistance here, as long as we're below this pivot, I think it's bearish uh, or bust. Uh, this is certainly one of my favorite bears within the energy sector right now for whatever that is worth uh, to you. So, I mean, really at this point in time, I mean, if you think about any any type of retracement, bullish or bearish, you know, when once we get the confirmation, whether it's upward movement off of this swing low or this one right here or this one right here or downward movement on this current Apache retracement, basically our entire line of thinking, at least in my mind, is, OK, well, now that we know where resistance is, we know that we're in a downward trend, the trend would suggest that we're going to go below here before we're going to go above here. And that's why it becomes appealing because regardless of what ultimately happens, that doesn't have to happen every time to, to be very good for us, right? We want it to happen every time. We certainly want it to happen this time, right? <laughs> so, uh, but basically the trend suggests, well, if this downtrend continues, we're gonna ultimately go below our low before we go above our high. And if that, you know, if we ultimately, every trend comes to an end, right? I hope it's not this time, Maybe it is though, if we create that higher low and then we take out that higher high or that, you know, that resistance level, well, now we have to have a much different conversation, right? Very much like XLE on the energy uh, sector as a whole. Uh, so as long as we're kind of trading with the trend, that's kind of the way I'm going to be looking at it. Did I like Friday as a bear more than today? Uh, absolutely. But technically speaking, resistance is still holding. I'm below those moving averages, still believe there's more reason to believe according to the trend, 
on energy as a whole and on APA in particular, that we're still more likely to go below here before we go above there. And maybe it's a little more difficult to, if I wanna make a new trade tomorrow from a risk or reward point of view, I don't know, but that's kind of the thought process there. So I hope that makes sense. And you can apply that. What I love about technical analysis is we can apply that across the board. It can't doesn't have to be just on this stock or that stock. That's what I love about it. We can use that analysis over and over again the ticker symbol changes, but the technical pattern stays the same, right? Uh, so, yep, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. Uh, as always, it's my pleasure. All right, guys. Well, hey, that's going to do the market recap for today. Boring day, but even boring days, there's stuff to talk about, right? There's really no such thing as a really, really boring day in the market. Some days are just a lot more boring than others. Uh, but that is going to do the market recap for today. Uh, but as always, thank you all so much for your time. It is certainly my pleasure. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me here. Always more fun to do this with you guys than on my own. So thank you for joining me. Thank you uh, to those of you who watch a little later in the day. Uh, we certainly appreciate that as well. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button. You know the drill there. I uh, certainly invite you to join us uh, on the YouTube channel. Join us over at Tackle Trading on Twitter. You can find me at Frank Martin 23 on Twitter as well. Be sure to check out that Tackle Instagram page too. There's some cool things going on. Not too long, uh, we'll be doing another vote. Uh, so get your vote in there. See what we're going to be talking about uh, here a little bit later in the week. So uh, guys, with that, uh, I'll be doing our onboarding webinar for our new team members here this evening. So uh, if, uh, if that's you, I'll look forward to seeing you tonight. If that's not, I will let you get out of here. Wish you a happy Monday afternoon and evening. Enjoy it. Uh, we'll pick right back up same time and channel here tomorrow afternoon. So, hey, guys, thank you all so much. It is certainly my pleasure. Uh, I appreciate you guys uh, hanging in there with me. So thank you for joining me. Get out of here, guys. Go enjoy the rest of your Monday. Be ready for uh, probably another boring day tomorrow, uh, tomorrow. But just when we get lulled, right, that's when it, uh, the exciting stuff happens. So we'll be ready if it doesn't want to be boring. Uh, I suspect there's a little, good, a little bit of a chance it's going to be boring, though. <laughs> so we'll see. All right, guys, thank you all so much. Get out of here. Have a great afternoon. And I will see you same time, same channel here tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. Bye now.